Mitch McConnell, you remember Mitch McConnell? He used to be in power and before that, he basically just spent day after day stopping Barack Obama from accomplishing anything. Well, he's going back to that mode. And in the transition to democratic control of the Senate, he has been effectively blocking everything. The transfer of power in a variety of different organizations inside of the Senate that are supposed to be naturally transferred over to the party that has a majority control. He had been stopping that saying, I will stop obstructing when you promise that you will keep the filibuster around so that I can keep obstructing with the filibuster. It was a great deal that he was laying out. Apparently it's been called off though, but in a way that's not necessarily any more positive for those who want stuff to be accomplished in the Senate. Mitch McConnell said late last night that he had essentially accomplished his goal after two Democratic senators said they would not agree to changing the rules to end the filibuster, which would require a 60 vote threshold to advance most legislation. Without the support of all Democratic senators, a rules change would fail. And it sort of makes sense. I mean, if you want them to promise not to change it and you've got enough votes that they can't change it, you don't need them to promise to not change it effectively. And so he put out a statement saying, with these assurances, I look forward to moving ahead with a power sharing agreement modeled on that precedent. He didn't name the Democrats, but Joe Manchin and Kristen Cinema are gonna Joe Manchin and Kristen Cinema, so there's a pretty good chance it's them. And I love that like, He's mercifully agreeing to a power sharing agreement. When they lost the House, they lost the presidency, they lost the Senate. The Dems won everything. Can we please get a little bit of power? But anyway, Adrian, what do you think about this? The back and forth on the filibuster. It's, you know what, it really shows that Senator McConnell, he he overreached in his negotiations here, where he thought that, hey, this argument's gonna work. And as you've observed, it's absolutely nonsensical. And in addition, it really just shows how unwilling and just irrational the Republican Party can be when it comes to actual actual advancements in our society. And the fact that they're willing to go these great lengths to try to shut those things down. And you know, it's not lost on me the fact that the filibuster is rooted in racism and trying to block any advancements for black people in terms of legislation. And mm -hmm. the fact that McConnell really wants to hold on to this, it just it speaks volumes in terms in terms of the extent of the trash. Yeah, yeah. And my fear is that the trash isn't just on that side. So we have a statement from a spokesperson for Chuck Schumer. Chuck Schumer, and they're very happy obviously because the impasse has been um, surpassed. But they say, we're glad Senator McConnell threw in the towel and gave up on his ridiculous demand. We look forward to organizing the Senate under democratic control and start getting big bold things done for the American people. Okay, so that's Justin Goodman. Okay, so good, he threw in the towel, I guess. But he threw in the towel because he thought that he didn't need the towel anymore. He was done with the towel. When you wipe off your forehead, you're done with it, you put it down, it's sweaty now. Um, they, they're saying they're gonna start getting big, bold things done. But Adrian, are, are we to believe that there isn't going to be an automatic filibuster on literally every piece of legislation going forward? Like you still are no closer to getting those big, bold things done unless you get rid of the filibuster. And he seems to be implying that he's got a pretty rock hard confirmation from at least two senators that it's not gonna happen. So. I don't know, it feels like we're in a very similar situation that we were under Obama. Yeah, it definitely seems like it's gonna be a precarious situation if something isn't done. And I think that that's one of the kind of shortfalls of the Democrats, the fact that they're not making these moves in advance, anticipating essentially what the Republicans are gonna do. If this were a chess game, we would lose every time. And we continue to lose because we almost play this wait and see if they're going to be logical or if they're going to be professional or engage in decorum and fairness. And then we go, "Oh my God, they're not doing that. And so it just continues to be this circular engagement of not necessarily being able to effectuate the change that we want as a nation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like like we're gonna we're gonna talk a lot about the, the filibuster going forward because it's important. Um, but like if I could reach like Joe Manchin and Kristen Cinema, so you're you're watching the show right now, let me talk directly to you. Um, you presumably like taking over the majority in the Senate, right? That's a cool thing because in theory, you could pass legislation, you could confirm judges and things like that. Um, but let me ask you this, how long would you like to be in the majority? Because if you'd like it to last about two years, I think we could make that happen. I think you could uh, give McConnell your reassurances, the filibuster's never gonna go anywhere. He and the Republicans can block literally everything. None of the crises that America faces can be solved. People can continue to suffer for the next two years and then, when the Republicans run on them actually being able to get stuff done, 
knowing full well cynically that they stopped stuff from getting done, but that's the way politics works. They're gonna kick your butts and they're gonna take back control of the Senate. And I know that I'm in a bubble and I'm not the most intelligent person in the world. But if you're watching this, do you disagree with any of the steps that I just laid out? Does anyone disagree that they're gonna block everything? That if nothing gets done, midterm elections are gonna go the way they always go in dark times. The party in power loses seats. You can't afford to lose even one, so you're gonna lose the majority. I feel I feel like that's reasonable. And so one would have to wonder if this is a plan that Kristen Cinema and Joe Manchin are signing on to, do they actually have any interest whatsoever in Democrats continuing control of the Senate? Or is that not actually a priority for them? Well, I think what a lot of them are masquerading as Democrats. So I don't think it's necessarily a priority for them because the Democrats staying in control is not what they're necessarily focused on. And I think that that's also one of the shortcomings of the Democratic Party, allowing these people to continue to masquerade and to have this faux persona of we have power and control when no, not really. You have these wavering pieces that you can't guarantee what direction they're going to go in. And unfortunately, as a result of that, hanging your hat on the thought that we're going to make some bold, you know, true progressive moves. It's like, really? Because the last time I checked, you were not actually in power, that that is something that's more of a facade. Yeah, exactly. And, and I feel like I feel like when we're talking about potential rules changes, reforms to the way the Senate works or other aspects of government, like people will evaluate those with this sort of mythic idea of what American American government is and how it's functioned. And they just think, oh, well, you know, the filibuster, it's in the Constitution, it's been around for hundreds of years. None of that is true, of course, but they think that. And they think, well, it's really important to get this done. I mean, after all, didn't you like the filibuster being around when the Democrats were in control? And that's true. And I understand that on a shallow level, that might seem hypocritical. But I would ask you to look into what was being blocked with the filibuster. What the actual position of the majority of Americans were on the things the Democrats were blocking when they were in the minority and the things that the Republicans will be blocking now that the Democrats have taken control of government. And I know that like it's been around a long time. Any sort of big structural change to American government shouldn't be rushed into, surely. But I would argue that getting rid of the filibuster today is hardly rushing things. The filibuster today is not what the filibuster was 50 years ago. And it certainly wasn't what it was 150 years ago since it didn't even exist then. Like 50 years ago, there was not an assumption that literally everything, including being able to choose the chairman of Senate committees, would be automatically filibustered. That every judge would be automatically filibustered. Now we've moved past that. Remember that we've already shown that you can chip away at the filibuster, but that is not what it was. You used to have to actually stand up, occupy the floor, potentially draw public scorn for your position. Now they don't have to do any of that. They can stand against a raise to the minimum wage, COVID aid, Green New Deal, whatever you want. And they don't really have to filibuster it. They just check a box and then they walk away, they go home and they raise more money. Like we're getting rid of the filibuster might seem extreme, but I would argue that the current situation is as extreme, but it's extreme in a way that is stopping the government from actually solving any problems. And the people have voted multiple times in every way they can to try to put people into government who will try to finally do something. The Republicans had their chance. They didn't want it because they don't consider those problems to be actual problems for the people they represent who are the wealthy who aren't bothered by those problems. So it's complex, we're gonna be talking about it a lot. But I would just argue to keep an open mind if you want anything to happen in the American government over the next two years. I don't think you're asking for too much. You're not asking for too much. You know, and it's a poor analogy, but I think it's all rooted in the same thing. The terms or the reality that the filibuster was not part of the original design of the Senate, yet it came in as a result to block any progress for people of color when it comes to legislation. And just and the fact that it's still around and it is abused and people can just do it so easily, it kind of reminds me of all the other issues involved in our government that arise out of ways to oppress marginalized. Marginalized groups, like the fact that marijuana is still illegal at the federal level, and the fact that you know, hey, it was condemned and determined to be illegal because it was rooted in racism, and all of these things that we say, nope, it's part of American fabric. Oh, it's law. It's this and that. It's like laws are meant to be changed, and they should. Mm-hmm. They need to evolve with society. So the same thing when it comes to rules and getting rid of arcane practices that are used to hold us back into points in time, which we are no longer in existence. 
Exactly, exactly. And and by the way, if, if you're concerned out there that, well, if, if you get rid of it, then the Republicans won't have to abide by it when they retake control. I got news for you, the Republicans have never been constrained by any rules or norms in getting what they wanted done. They did with the filibuster existing when they had control. The thing they wanted was tax cuts for billionaires. And then they were pretty much done. There's other stuff that hypothetically they might have wanted to get done, but that was their only legislative priority and they got it done despite the filibuster existing. So. That's another fear that I don't really think is warranted. And to Adrian's point, if Ted Cruz wants to stand up for 60 hours and filibuster the legalization of marijuana by reading Dr. Seuss or whatever, more power to him. He can do that and the American people can turn against him because there is overwhelming support for legalization. These are the sorts of things that if you wanna really filibuster, then really filibuster. And if you don't really wanna filibuster, then let's just get rid of it. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.